NASA released the first colored images of our universe from James Webb in July. Since then, the Space Telescope has captured indication of a supernova, carbon dioxide in an exoplanet's atmosphere, and now James Webb has captured an image of a beautiful Einstein ring. Relativity tells us that matter curves spacetime creating gravity. As light passes through this curvature, its path is deflected. Eventually, light rays passing around a massive object converge at a focus, creating a gravitational lens. If we position ourselves exactly at the focal point and look back toward the lens, we'd see a ring of light surrounding the lensing object called an Einstein ring. We use Einstein rings to probe distant galaxies that are being lensed by foreground galaxies. However, Einstein rings are rare because seeing them requires a chance alignment between the source, the lensing object, and Earth. But if we use the Sun as a gravitational lens, we could, in principle, position a telescope at the focus for any target of our choosing. As gravitational lenses go, the Sun isn't as handy as, say, a black hole, but it is massive enough to amplify a background source by a factor of 100 billion. That's why a team of scientists and engineers are developing a solar gravitational lens mission. The team is led by Dr. Slava Turyshev at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. What is Solar Gravitational Mission, or SGL? Solar gravitational lensing is a phenomenon that happens near huge celestial entities, where gravity is powerful enough to distort spacetime when viewed through this bent area. An item seems closer and bigger as you are looking through a magnifying lens. How big telescope we are talking about here to examine the surface of an exoplanet? This wild idea, known as a Solar Gravitational Lens SGL mission, may sound like an Einsteinian fever dream, but scientists have now found that it is feasible with technologies that are either extant or in active development, according to a new study. An SGL mission could zoom in to see surface features of exoplanets, on scales of just tens of miles, which could provide smoking gun evidence of extraterrestrial life. It's no wonder, then, that scientists have speculated about a potential SGL mission for decades. In 2020, NASA funded an investigation into the feasibility of the mission as part of its Innovative Advanced Concepts NIAC program. How James Webb Telescope captured this image of a stunning Einstein ring. The image was created using details captured by James Webb's MIRI detector. It was also spotted using the telescope's NIR cam detector. The picture was colorized by Redditor U slash SpaceGuy44, who previously colorized another James Webb image. The image of the Einstein ring is remarkable because this kind of occurrence doesn't happen every day. An Einstein ring is primarily when light from a galaxy or star passes another galaxy or a massive object en route to Earth. Because the large object's gravity bends the light, it produces gravitational lensing. This forms a ring life effect, making the galaxy's light appear as a nearly perfect ring. In this latest image, James Webb has captured the galaxy SPTS J041839-4751.8. So, this latest James Webb image of an Einstein ring isn't actually the galaxy that is creating the light. Instead, we clearly see the light from that galaxy as it bends around the foreground galaxy. Why this is important and what are the things we need to understand? Consider an exo-Earth 100 light years away. In order to make a one pixel image of the planet's surface, we need a telescope 90 kilometers in diameter. That's large enough to extend from Philly to Atlantic City. It's not impossible, but it'll take a while. Light from the planet's host star will contaminate the image, either directly or by scattering off the dust within its planetary system. The only way to increase the signal-to-noise ratio is to increase the integration time to 100,000 years. That's how long it would take to make a one-pixel image of the planet. And what we really want to see is something more like this, with a resolution of a thousand by a thousand pixels, and to create it within my lifetime yours too. This image was composed from four months of data from NASA's Terra satellite. At up to one kilometer per pixel, we can easily make out continents and oceans. We can see color variations and distinguish deserts from vegetation. Not only is vegetation proof of life on this planet, but if we look closely, we can even see lights on the night side. In other words, proof of advanced life. However, a similar sized image of our example exoplanet requires a telescope 90,000 kilometers in diameter. That's seven times larger than Earth. Even if the mirror were just a single micron thick, it would have a mass of about one trillion kilograms. You can't put it in orbit around Earth because tidal forces would just tear it apart. 
You'd have to put it into its own orbit around the sun, but then it would become an instant light sail and leave our solar system within a year. With its unique optical properties, the SGL can be used to obtain detailed, high-resolution images of Earth-like exoplanets as far as 100 light-years from Earth, with measurement durations lasting months, or at most a few years. Of particular interest is the possibility of using the SGL to obtain images of high spatial and spectral resolution of a yet-to-be-identified, potentially life-bearing exoplanet in another solar system in our galactic neighborhood. According to researchers, the direct high-resolution images of an exoplanet obtained with the SGL could lead to insight on the ongoing biological processes on the target exoplanet and find signs of habitability. From the right perspective, this warped spacetime magnifies whatever is located behind it, enabling scientists to spot objects that would be otherwise out of view, such as distant galaxies or rogue planets floating through space with no star. The trippy sights produced by gravitational lensing were recently showcased in the first public images captured by the James Webb Space Telescope, which included eerily magnified galaxies in the early universe. Light from a source passes through the pinhole and makes an image on a screen. The farther the light has to travel to form the image, the larger the image gets. At 650 AU, the planet's image is 1.3 kilometers across. Instead of an image forming on the detector, the detector would be inside the image. This means an ordinary size telescope at the SGL can only image a single pixel of the planet. In this case, a one meter sensor images a pixel corresponding to a 10 kilometer patch of the planet's surface. The telescope moves to the next pixel location and then makes another image. This is a technique called rastering. Meanwhile, the planet isn't sitting still for its close-up. It rotates on its axis and orbits its star. But not only is the planet moving, but so is the telescope. Believe it or not, the sun is not fixed at the center of the solar system. Instead, it moves around the solar system's barycenter as it's tugged back and forth by the planets particularly Jupiter and Saturn. There are many other motions to consider, but they all add up to a predictable wobble of the telescope. The wobble is slow enough that the spacecraft can use ion microthrusters to generate the necessary sideways velocities to cancel out these motions. With these issues addressed, let's consider what a telescope actually sees from the SGL's focus. The Einstein ring is as thick as its image is wide. In our example, the ring is just 1.3 kilometers thick, therefore this illustration is way out of scale. Are we a little closer to alien life? Even if they were able to overcome the technical hurdles involved with this concept, which include the development of more reliable solar sails and long-duration navigation and communication systems, the team estimated that it would take at least 25 to 30 years for a spacecraft to reach this far-flung location, in the best-case scenario. Halvagian and his colleagues acknowledged, if a telescope were able to spot alien life, arguably the biggest breakthrough in science, it would be well worth the long wait. This paper presents an approach to realizing this audacious mission. The potential science return of such a mission would be unprecedented, comparable even to what would be achieved by an actual interstellar mission which is not achievable with present-day technology. The anticipated discovery of life-bearing exoplanets with the demonstrated feasibility of an SGL mission should present a compelling case for pursuing this mission. It is our only means, in the foreseeable future, to learn details about exosolar sister planets like our home world. Hope you liked the video, stay curious.